So Hello, good this is Carl Sussman here with my good friend Debbie Bremner. This beautiful Friday morning. How are you this morning, Debbie? I'm very good. Things are really good in the real estate market, so I'm happy to be here and happy to be sharing information today. You betcha. Sorry betcha. we've had a little hiatus for a couple of weeks there, but I guess it's a good thing when you're so busy you can't coordinate schedules, and, and I'm, I'm happy to be in that position as well. I, we That's were right. just chit-chatting about something that uh, was current in the news, and I think uh, some very Im important news for people to be aware of as property owners. Why don't you go ahead and give me, the, give me that spiel again while I have my first delicious sip of my freshly Starbucks iced latte that just made its way to my desk. Thank you so much. Okay. I will say that his assistant did not bring one for me, so that's okay. I will let but, her know. Okay. Um, so, not as we know, all real estate is local, and what's happening locally in Los Angeles is we're str struggling valiantly to survive budget cuts and, and survive what's going on and one of the most recent things that happened coincided with a neighborhood event that I'd like to talk about. So yesterday in the news there were two interesting things that sort of dovetailed into each other. The first was a very sad incident in uh, Mar Vista which for those of you that don't know Los Angeles we'll just call it West Los Angeles on the, on the beach side. And uh, what's interesting about this incident in Mar Vista was there was a, a dog that had been cited multiple times for being a neighborhood nuisance, and that was about barking and you know being threatening to neighbors walking by on the sidewalk. Um, but just just to clarify, because it sounds funny, they you say the dog was cited. They obviously they they go and they yeah. make a well. I'm just saying you you could get the impression that maybe they leave a note or something but this is actually a formal written process that the owners of the animal will receive that says look there have been complaints there's concerns about your animal do something about it so it it's a very formal process it's not something that can be oh i didn't know anyone was complaining i mean if if you get a notice on your animal being a nuisance you definitely do know about it right and it's and it is a a serious thing i i don't i'm not making light of this in any way shape or form because Generally, when it gets to that point, it's not just neighbors talking over their fence saying, oh, my God, did you hear the neighbor's dog barking last night? It's, look, this the, we're, we're putting our neighborhood at risk by having this dog in the, in the area, and can you talk to the owner? So the owner had been notified multiple times about this dog, and yesterday, somehow, I don't know the details of this, but the dog did get loose as a woman was walking by, walking her own dog. Now, her dog is much smaller and was gotten by the throat by this dog. And in the woman's attempt to free and extricate her, her dog from the jaws of this neighborhood nuisance dog, her arm was uh, severely bitten as well by the dog. So it was an attack of the dog by, to, to the, the dog and the owner. And uh, so immediately the dog was confiscated and taken away. And the littler dog went into surgery and looks like it's going to be okay. And, of course, the woman went to the emergency room and she looks like it, it, she's going to be okay. But as we all know from these situations, it could have gone much worse. At the same time, yesterday afternoon, we have a new head of animal regulation who just took of just took her place yesterday and we have these tremendous issues with overcrowding in our animal shelters because people are not taking care of their animals they're letting them run free they're not licensed the the dogs and cats are obviously uh, procreating at rapid numbers and all of those unwanted unneeded animals are going to the shelters being cared for but then being euthanized because people can't adopt. There's a limit in the city of Los Angeles that you can have either three cats or three dogs, but three pets is the limit of what they'll license for you. And so, interestingly enough, because they're trying to do something about how much they're spending on the shelters, they'd like to raise the limit in Los Angeles to homeowners being allowed to have five animals at one time. And it's kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul they're uh, they're taking the, the problem out of the shelters and putting it back in the neighborhoods. And already, the irresponsible pet owners are having as many animals as they want. So this, 
you know, we're seeing that the problem is just being put into the neighborhood where I was asking Carl before all of you jumped on this recording, you know, what does that mean for neighborhood liability for the city, for the individual homeowner? And Carl said he has some information for us about that. So I'd like to discuss this topic. I just have to, I just smile because you always manage to put these things so perfectly politically correctly about how, and of course, the animals are procreating and at their normal rates. And, and I think it, it, you just have just set the perfect way of putting these things so just so politically correctly. Well, what's interesting about this is, you know, animal liability with, with homeowners has always been an issue because, you know, everyone yeah. has, oh, my pit bull doesn't bite. Oh, my pit bull is the most friendly there is. Oh, my Rottweiler would never, would lick your face. As an appetizer, right. maybe no, and, and so you know, animal liability <laughs> is something that we dog liability specifically. We might as well say it since we're talking about that is an issue that we we hear about in the insurance industry continually. What's interesting is there's a, a people have sort of a false sense of security that they think that if well if their dog is safe and their dog doesn't bite that they ha they they're basically curbing their liability. Let me give you an example. If I let's say I don't even own a pet. I don't have a dog. You're walking your dog down the street, let's say even with this example you gave, and another animal or another person comes by and your dog bites someone else while in, on my property. Because you're on my property, I now have animal liability. And oh. my proper, yes, and my property insurance policy would have to respond to that as well. Oh. So there's actually I didn't know. Yeah, I, I knew I'd get that look from you. There's yes. actually been a handful of insurance companies that have tried to, I, I don't want to say weasel out, but try and avoid that liability by asking people to save a few dollars on their policy and have them sign an animal liability exclusion. Well, what people were doing was they're saying, oh, well, I don't even own a pet, so I might as well do it. Well, we had to do a little bit of educating is that just because you don't own a pet, it doesn't mean that you don't have an animal liability exposure. You do. So, so to be clear then, um, there's a mom in a stroller walking down the street and the mom stops in front of my house on the sidewalk, which by the way, the city of Los That's Angeles right. is trying to give back to me right now. And she's sitting and adjusting the baby in the stroller, giving the pacifier or whatever. And another person comes by walking down the street with their dog and their dog attacks her baby on my, at, at my house. I'm liable for the actions of that pet and you any are. damages to you are <gasps> you are and and the, and the problem and the problem is at, from a consumer standpoint is that people are assuming that if they don't have a pet they don't need animal liability if they have a friendly pet they don't need animal liability where it really has nothing to do with any of that it has to oh do with my gosh. yeah and You're right. This is an aha moment this for me. Is an aha I moment, yeah. This, so, and I've never been able to tell my clients this. Yeah. This is a very interesting piece of information. Fortunately, Thank you. fortunately, what's interesting about it is that you just it's one of those things that you want to be sure that you're clear on when you're looking to obtain any type of property insurance that you do have animal liability. And don't think or don't assume that just because you don't have an animal or again you have the friendly pit bull that you know you're okay you need to worry about it because you do you still have that exposure based on what your neighbor has back to the original point of the story we started now we're going to say and i think it's relatively safe to bet that this this new legislation is going to pass we're going to go from having three pets yeah. to five pets well that's a lot more animals that's a lot more doggies running around that could potentially be you know causing havoc now mind you i'm an animal lover i love dogs i i, I mean i'm grown up with dogs i mean i'm, I'm, I'm big on that so i'm not being anti-animal problem with this particular legislation in my mind is people that already have more than three pets already have three pets i don't think that there's a single family out there that says oh i have my three pet maximum i would so go and adopt another two if only it was legal i mean right. it, it sounds ridiculous even well, there's a sliver of the there's a sliver of the animal lover world who are animal activists who will go and adopt an extra two, and and you know sort of be the you interim think? housing for those to save them from euthanizing the animal. But that's a sliver of the of the place. I mean, most most families do not have five or six or seven pets, at least in the area that I'm working. That's not an issue. So I think this is just, again, a way to rob Peter to pay Paul. This is a way to... 
I don't see it. I don't see it accomplishing much of anything, frankly. And and I, and I think again, I think it's a it's a very short sighted way to try and and like you're saying, save money. Maybe. I mean, again, I I mean, you you maybe I'm I'm just not as uh, I'm not as much as a believer. I just I don't see. I think people that are that would go and and adopt extra animals are already doing it. You know, yeah. if, if I were if I had enough space and I you know and, and that was my thing to be, you know, animal rescue, animal rescue, then I, I wouldn't be terribly concerned about having three or four or five. I would, I would just do that. I mean, I'm not worried about yeah. people knocking down my door and saying, I think I heard it. I got fourth bark, you know, behind the gate there. <laughs> so I, I just can't see what this is going to accomplish at all, except, again, uh, potentially have just more, more animals running around, you know, and... and well, the upshot for, of this conversation for me is to sit with my clients and say, it's time for us to, again, talk to you about going back with your, to go back to Carl and l- overlook your, your policy and see where you stand on this one issue because this is something that you really need to protect yourself. You know, the, the area that I work is is an extremely high property value area, and it's, these people could have very deep pockets. And something like this, if this became a lawsuit, would be very, very expensive. Sure. Very sure. expensive. Sure. So it's time to shift the liability back. You know, that's a, a piece of insurance worth having, I, I think. For I'm, sure. I'm stopped at this. I really didn't know this. So you've educated me once again. Well, it's always my pleasure to do so. It's always it's a challenge, too, because it's hard to find things that you're not clear on. Yeah. This is one well, of those things. Well, it's it, a little tiny thing. It's a little tiny piece of the puzzle, but it's a big piece because people do, you know, walk their dogs and dogs get out of yards and it happens. It mm-hmm. just happens. Absolutely. Well, if you have any other questions on this or if you want to touch on this uh, in more detail, we can certainly do that again. We can certainly do it again uh, next week or so. I'm also going to give a shout out to anyone out there that's in the legal profession if they want to give an opinion on this or if they've had any firsthand knowledge of, uh, of lawsuits that may have uh, developed in this, in this area to sort of give us some feedback on how that works. We'll try and keep the insurance company names out of it. Uh, but but again, I, I can say from personal experience that this is something that we've we've already dealt with. So it's definitely out there and something to be aware of. And as you can see, Carl and I are always interested in the little tidbits that are happening in each of the neighborhoods that we serve. So if you um, want to talk a little bit more about your specific neighborhood, please call us. We're we're happy to help. Um, you'll, our contact information will be linked to this, and we'd love to hear your questions and your experiences in your little local neighborhood. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks again for watching, and we will hopefully talk to you again same time next week. We will see you next Friday. Exactly. And hopefully have coffee, and I probably won't. Oh, we'll have to make sure you have coffee somehow. All right. Okay.